I'd like to preface this video with a trigger warning. If you are a survivor or someone who is very sensitive and someone talking about the abuse they suffered or rape is triggering to you, please click off of this video now. Um, I want to tell you guys about the time that I almost committed suicide. It's a very difficult subject. It's not something I talk about very much. Um, it's not something I even told anybody until just this last year or this last couple years. Um, I was 21 years old and my husband at the time had just raped me in my sleep again. Um, I was having a nightmare that I was being raped as a little girl because I was also been sexually abused as a child and um, I woke up and he was doing the same things to me that my stepfather was doing in the dream and then he left um, he abandoned me basically for the weekend after raping me he left and went to a casino I didn't know where he was I didn't know if he was okay but shortly after he finished and got dressed and left for the weekend um, I cried a lot and I was in a lot of pain and not just mental pain but like physical pain and I remember I was bleeding and I went into the bathroom and I stood there and I looked into the mirror for a long time and I didn't want to be alive anymore I didn't want to exist anymore I thought if I was gone then the pain would stop I was desperate to make the pain stop the physical pain the mental pain the pain of being betrayed by someone who kept saying that they loved me but they wouldn't stop hurting me the pain from my childhood that never really got resolved because the police did nothing there was no justice and I kept looking in the mirror and I kept staring into my own eyes and uh, I opened the cabinet up and I started taking every pill in that cabinet all the aspirin all the prescriptions like everything 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 went in my hand and I swallowed it and I then um, sat on the ceramic tile and felt the cool smooth surface I leaned against the tub and I waited and eventually I started to get tired because many of those pills were um, sleeping pills and And then I think I either passed out or I went to sleep. And um, I thought finally I would not be in pain because I felt like I had been in pain my entire life and now my life was hell again. I blamed myself for loving that person, for being there, for forgiving him, for trying to work things out with him, for believing that he would not hurt me anymore, for giving love a shot, for even trying, for getting married, for everything. I just blame myself. My throat hurts talking about this. So then, after going to sleep, it was like somebody snapped their fingers because I was completely awake again and uh, I was throwing up 
I'm not sure how long I was throwing up before I actually like came into the realization that I was still alive. Threw up on the floor, threw up in the tub, threw up in the sink, threw up in the toilet, threw up on the wall, laid on the floor, cried because I wasn't dead, cried because I was still here. cried because of the pain and the disappointment that I still had to go on. I crawled back into the bedroom across the hall, crawled up in the bed, and laid there, staring at the ceiling and disassociating, and not knowing what to do not knowing how to help myself, feeling trapped in the relationship I was in. I wasn't working at the time. Couldn't have worked anyway because the abuse I was suffering was making me insane. The gaslighting, I was questioning my own reality and everything. I didn't know up from down really. I wasn't taking care of myself, I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping, except for when I did go to sleep, then he would rape me. I was usually up till 3 or 4 in the morning, and then after, like, a while, I would, like, sleep a couple of really light sleep hours. So anyway, after I crawled to bed and curled up and stared at the ceiling for a while and felt all this crushing disappointment that I still had to exist, I got really... Something happened in me that changed stuff for me. I got angry. I started remembering all the times that I had talked to him and told him about my past as a little girl being raped and hurt and tortured and psychologically tortured, even physically, whatever. All of that, I, I told him before we had even got married because he had hurt me even before we got married and he promised me that he would not do that again. The reality is that he didn't care. He didn't care that he was hurting me. He didn't care that he was raping me. He only cared about himself. He wasn't the person that I thought he was. He wasn't the person that I thought I was in love with. That person did not exist. He tricked me. He asked me what I wanted. And I told him exactly what I wanted. And then he chameleoned himself into that to pretend to be that everything for me. And then once I trusted him and once I started to sleep with him, he changed. Every once in a while, I got a glimpse of that man that I loved. I thought I knew. And then he was gone. He didn't want me to work. He just wanted me to be there. I'm not really the housewife type. I'm not one of those people that likes to clean or do any of that stuff. I prefer to be independent and have a partner instead of someone I have to rely on. Because of abusive situations, but I loved him, so I wanted him to be happy. It was a very miserable time in my life. And the more I laid there, and the more I stared at the ceiling, the more angry I got. My body was pretty numb because I was disassociated, but I was just angry. So I was like, what am I doing? Why am I here? Why did I survive? So then, um, I'm not really sure what happened after that exactly, but I think I called him and told him we needed to talk. And he didn't come back until like Sunday. I think, I think this suicide attempt happened on a 
on like a Friday or Thursday or something. Can't remember. Could have even been Saturday, but he was not there and I was alone and suffering and bleeding and I didn't go to the hospital. I figured I lived, fuck it. I'll just go on with my life. Pretend that it didn't happen because it felt like a failure. And when I eventually talked to him, I told him that we needed to get help as a couple or that he needed to leave. I gave him an ultimatum because I wasn't going to live like that anymore. And I was in too much pain and I had almost killed myself. So I really didn't like who I was and what I was doing and still really blame myself at that time. So then... I gave him the ultimatum, told him he was hurting me, and I couldn't take it anymore, and that I wasn't going to stand for it. So we had to get help, or he had to leave. And he got up immediately, and without really missing a beat, took off his ring, gave it to me, walked in the bedroom, packed a bag, and walked out the door. Later, he tells people that I left. Because I left the state. Because I wasn't going to like stick around and work things out with someone who was raping me. Wow. Such an awful person for that, right? Yeah. I felt stupid, but... His nephew passed away. And then I called him to see if he was okay. And we kind of almost got back together. I, had, I was in Tennessee at that point. I had moved there with my older brother. And um, he drove down and we spent the night together. And he was like he was when I first met him. But the very next day I had a car accident on the way back from seeing him. It was like the universe kind of was like, knock, knock. You're going to die if you stay with him. So, uh, I didn't see him again after that. And then he filed for divorce. We were trying to work things out, I guess, over the phone for a little while after that. And um, he just really thought that like sports was more important than working things out with me, which is just more selfishness, so. So that's the story of how I survived a suicide attempt. I didn't really survive on purpose. And when my PTSD gets to a certain level and it gets overwhelming, and I've had to deal with maybe 15 things at a time, I get overwhelmed and I shut down, and then I don't want to be here again. I have these thoughts normally pretty much every day that I don't want to be here, but it gets to the point where like, I'm thinking about how I would leave, like how I would hurt myself and things like that. I'm telling you this story because I want you to know that you're not the only one feeling that way if you don't want to be here anymore. It's okay to feel that way. A lot, a lot, a lot of people do. A lot of people don't talk about it. I didn't talk about it for a long time. But I want you to know that there's help out there. And I have gotten close a couple times to trying to commit suicide again. And I went and got help. And... I found hope and then I stayed. I have to stay in treatment in order to not become suicidal again. I'm still teetering on the edge of being in the hospital. But um, I wanted to share that with you guys because it's really important and it's not just important when a celebrity passes away. It's not 
just important because somebody's well known. It's important to every single one of you to take care of yourselves and if you need help to go get that help. And if you don't know how to go get that help, please message me or leave me a comment and I will do my best to try to um, give you some guidance. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, but I've been through some shit. So I can try to help you. Um, you can go to Psychology Today, you can look up suicide prevention, um, you can look up DVT skills to try um, to help you to do some distress tolerance and um, DBTs really helped me as well. So um, they also do like crisis management and stuff. Uh, we can even look up the RAP program. That's very helpful. It's W R A P program, RAP program. That can be very helpful to help you understand your symptoms when they're getting worse and how to help yourself. Um, hopefully someday I will be stable enough to take classes and maybe I can teach online some of this stuff that I've learned on how to help myself so that you guys can, those of you who are struggling, can have some kind of something because when I, when I attempted suicide, I had no help, and I had no resources, and I had no one to talk to about it. I was too afraid to talk to anybody. But there are people that care, and that are out there, and they want to help you, they want to see you be okay, and they want you to survive. I want you to survive. I want to survive as well. So, thank you guys for listening, and for the time that you've taken out of your day. Thank you for encouraging me because it helps, so.